Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series in New Jersey for the Season 3 Invitational, no less. I'm Nick Miller alongside Anthony Lowry. How you doing, good. sir? I'm good. Good to see you as always. Always good to have you in the sideboard here. You've always got something cool to play. Now today, I've seen you play a bunch of Legacy decks in the past, whether at Reanimator or Omnitel, usually some sort of combo deck. But today you're playing what we call Prison slash Ramp, or prison a big mana deck. combo-ish. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you're playing Mud. We've seen these types of decks before. Fast mana with Grim Monolith and Metal Worker, a bunch of artifacts, of course, and your fast lands like City of Traders, Ancient Tomb. But you also are this like prison deck that we've seen. Chalice of the Void, Trinisphere, Lodestone Golem. You know, going into an Invitational where Legacy is half the field and the top eight, why would you choose to play Mud? So I did a lot of soul searching for this Invitational. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure what I was going to play in Legacy. Like, Omnitel is obviously, not obviously, but definitely one of the best combo decks, if not the best combo decks, along with Storm and a smattering of other combo decks. And I wanted to find something that beat those while still having a powerful, proactive game plan. And I figured out that Trinisphere was actually just really, really good against a lot of the combo decks, and even some of the fair decks. Like, sticking in early Trinisphere is very, very good against, like, Delver decks, for example. Um, so I looked at Stompy decks, I didn't really like any of them because they were like, had really major consistency issues. So I came across Mud, and I just figured that Mud was the best Trinisphere deck, and I didn't think it was particularly close. So I decided to play Mud, uh, jammed a few games with it, and I figured out that the Omnitel matchup was just very, very good because everything that you bring in off of Omnitel, or most things that you bring in off of Omnitel is very good, whether it be Trinisphere, uh, Spine of Isha, uh, a lot of things. Right. <laughs> um, also, Chalice of the Void is just like one of the best cards you can play against fair decks. So I decided to go with this. It's a little bit of a gamble, but I figured it's an invitational. I want to just try to spike it. So hey, Yeah, I mean, we've seen Omnitel be enemy number one for a while now, since Dig Through Time. Right. You know, took second in Eternal Weekend. Chris right. Van Meter won the Premier IQ with it last week. It's everywhere. Right. You want to make sure you can beat that deck. Right. And it, we can even see matchups where lands, it's typically bad against Omnitel. They have these Chalice, these Trinisphere effects. Right. All of a sudden, they win the match. You have it main deck. Right. I have four Trinisphere's main deck, four Chalice of Void main deck, four Lodestone Golem main deck. I am not messing around. Like, I, like, even bringing in, like, a Lodestone Golem or any, like, Thalia-esque effect is so powerful because they spend a lot of mana just to stick their um, show and tell and omniscience, and they can't spend all of that mana to kill you in that turn. So oftentimes you'll just stick a Trinisphere or a Lodestone Golem and they might have to pass the turn and they let and you can stick another um, Thorn of Amethyst effect, which I have on the sideboard, or Lodestone Golem and just continue the pressure while also just stifling their mana. So Right, we've seen these decks from far back as vintage when you're looking at, you know, that type of stuff, factories and yeah. all that, workshops. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't have it, you know, off a workshop of course. Right. We uh, actually called this deck uh, Kmart. <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of workshops, because like obviously you don't have access to workshops, sure. but we called it Kmart because of Kudolfo Forge Master and like these makeshift lands. <laughs> right. But the premise is still the same. Right. You, you stick a chalice against a lot of the decks, they just don't operate. Right. And then you just get to do these broken, unfair things yes. that kind of give you an edge in like the miracle matchups and stuff like that. Right, exactly. Speaking of which, a bunch of stuff that costs a lot of mana, so it's hard to beat by counterbalance. You've got right. Worm Coral Entrant, yep. Sundering Titan, Platinum Empyrean. Steel Hellkite, Blight Steel Colossus, and the then of course the Steel. Forge Master pulling it all together so you can get these pieces. Exactly. Um, one of the big differences between this and a lot of other mud decks is I'm not playing Wasteland. Um, Wasteland is very good when you have these Thorn effects or these Solid effects because that just puts them off the land that they need to try to do anything. I opted against it for this Invitational because this deck is a half and half deck. It, the good half is going to probably crush them, but there are a lot of hands that you get that just don't really do anything. Like you have a lot of mana and you can't do anything, or you have a lot of big creatures and you can't cast them. Mishra's Factory is an attempt to bridge that gap. It is a decent attacker. It's a very good blocker. Being a 3-3 blocker is pretty relevant. And it's also an artifact that you can sacrifice to Kudolfa Forge Master. So that, that's one attempt to bring everything together along with uh, all four Cabinet Souls because of the Delver decks and the Miracles decks. 
tavern coming in, you're naming either Golem or Construct. Correct. You can hit all of your big threats, and there's nothing that decks with counter magic can do about it. Right, exactly. I named Worm in round one against Rug Delver, so I can just stick the Worm Coil Engine because I know they just can't beat that card. Mm -hmm. So, But usually it's Golem or Construct. Of course, we have some other big threats here. We've got Ugin. He's oh, yeah. making an appearance all over the place. Yep. One of the best things because all your cards are colorless. Exactly. Um, it is one of your best options against Elves. It is one of your best options against the Delver decks. Uh, the non-black Delver decks, because they can stick Gurmag Angler, and that's like really annoying. Sure. But usually just the Elves decks, the uh, any tribal deck, Death and Taxes, etc. Spinisha, a spicy number here. It allows you to just blow up whatever you want. Yeah, blow up Omniscience, if they show and tell. That's the big one. Uh, that that spot was Karn Liberated, but since I want to be Omnitel like, really badly, I swap that out for a Spine, and you just never have to cast it. And the show and tell is just like very bad. They can't stick anything. They have to kill you that turn, and that's really hard to do if you already have a uh, Falia effect. So. Last remaining pieces, you got the Phyrexian Revoker, a couple more on the board here. You can just name troublesome things, Divining right. Top. Yeah, um, I have one Phyrexian Revoker in the main deck. If you're, if you're blind, you name Top. That's my plan, but usually, I just want Revoker just to like hit very miscellaneous things. It was a free spot. I didn't really want another big creature, and I'm already playing 24 lands, which is a lot for Legacy. So I figured I have the one flexible utility spot, and Phyrexian Revoker is that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this deck in the past. Usually you see people that just play this deck all the time. Right. They're just the mud players you know coming in. Right. Are you going to catch some people by surprise with this type of deck? Yeah, absolutely. Like, it takes a lot for me to not play a Brainstorm Force of Will deck. It takes a lot. So having this deck is like a, a surprise to even me because I'm all I'm usually always playing Omnitel. Like that's been my deck for quite a while. Like I had a little stint with Burning Reanimator. We don't talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I think this deck is really good for this particular tournament and I'm hoping to do well on the Legacy Force with it. All right, we'll go over the sideboard real quick here before we get you out of here. Got a bunch of cool one-ofs that you can kind of get via Forge Master, you know, another Sundering Titan. Right. Got a Graft Digger's Cage, Sabo's Web, and Snaring Bridge, all these little cool pieces. Yep. Shut down niche decks. Yeah, I have additional Revokers and Pitting Needles as well. I have a lot of these effects. I have six of this effect. Um, I really, really want to beat Miracles. Right. Um, there's also like Elves and stuff like that that you want as well. And yeah, like more Thorn of Amethyst, uh, Sabo's Web for lands and like other um, annoying lands. Um, and a one spell Skype for like Burn and other stuff like that because since the, since the Legacy is the first format of the Invitational, I expect more burn decks because there are a lot of players who don't have uh, Legacy cards and stuff like that. So that's something I feel that that was worth a sideboard spot. So I just decided to go with the Spell Sky because it also has utility uh, elsewhere. It like wards off the sword to plowshares against uh, certain decks and stuff like that. So. Well, it's very clear what you want to beat. Yeah. You've got the tools to do it. I wish you the best of luck here in the Invitational. Thank you very Anthony much. Lowry. I'm Nick Miller here on the Cyborg. Stay tuned for all the Invitational action.